In this lesson, we will introduce the concept of the nonlinear solver. We also discuss why and when we need one. In the case of a linear system, the procedure to calculate the solution is fairly straightforward. Let's look at this simple example. If we wish to calculate the displacements in the system for an applied force, since the stiffness is constant and is nothing more than just the slope of the force displacement curve, the resultant displacement is simply the force divided by the stiffness. This simple relationship was derived by Robert Hooke in the 1600s. We use a linear matrix algebra to solve this equation for an entire simulation model. As recall, there can be tens to millions of displacements or degrees of freedom to solve for. Once we have the unknowns, which are the displacements, we can derive the other quantities such as the strains and the stresses. Now, let's compare and contrast linear and nonlinear systems via two simple examples. The coil spring in your car suspension plays an important role in smoothing the ride for the occupants. Those springs typically have a nearly linear response, meaning the force versus displacement curve is pretty much a straight line when the suspension is being compressed. But if we drive our car to the nearest lake or river, grab our fishing pole and go fishing, our fishing pole will exhibit a non-linear response. And what this means is the pole as it deforms, it requires more and more force to further deflect the pole tip. This can be seen in the increasing slope of the force displacement curve. When the force displacement response is nonlinear, the procedure to solve is not so straightforward. The functional form of this response can be anything, and since the stiffness changes at every point, we'll need to know how the stiffness changes for the system at all displacements a priori and this knowledge is usually not available to the designer or the analyst. For this reason, there is a need for special methods that are applicable for all the functional forms. Here we see some examples of nonlinear behavior. These curves might represent a part undergoing plastic or hyperelastic deformation, which large displacements in the functional form of the response can be, again, any shape. The challenge is we do not know how the stiffness changes as the structure deforms, so we cannot simply compute the displacement given the applied load. Now, yes, we typically can determine how a piece of metal or rubber or other material of the like will deform when stretched or compressed, but once we use it in our actual structure with unique loadings, boundary conditions, contacts, etc., the force displacement response will be uniquely different. And that is the point to emphasize, that we do not know the response a priori. Hence, a nonlinear solver is necessary. So, if we are to solve for nonlinear behavior or structure, how will we do it? The method must work for all functional forms of the response. One such method that is commonly used is the newton ralphson method. It is named after Sir Isaac Newton and Joseph Ralphson. It is an iterative method and that is used pervasively in many fields such as the sciences, engineering, even economics. We'll explore the details of the Newton-Rapson method in the next section.